Hello and welcome to Take Time. I am your host, Patrick Marlett. The month is February and you are here for another Strap Roundup. This month we'll be featuring three brands. We have Armilla, Barden, and Vario. Armilla is a new brand with two strap options currently available on the market. The Vestigo on my left and the Aerial Ballistic on my right. Now, the Vestigo will feature brushed hardware only and measure 325 millimeters in total length at 1.2 millimeters thick and come in at 20 or 22 millimeters in total width. It's listed to have a ballistic weave that's very similar to your standard seatbelt style nylon strap. There are two color options here, black or gray featured, and they will weigh at 25 pounds or 32 US dollars. Of course, there is a depreciated rate on a bundled option, and I'll encourage you to check out Armilla's site to see how much of a discount you'll receive. The Aerial Ballistic comes equipped with polished hardware only and measures exactly the same at 325 millimeters in total length. However, it does measure 1.4 millimeters thick, so roughly 2.8 right around where the watch head will be seated. It's 20 or 22 millimeters in total width and it also has a ballistic style weave though I'll note that the weave here is a little bit looser than the Vestigos. This has four separate color options you can buy at blue, green, khaki as seen, or gray with different trimming. These will all come in at about 25 pounds or again 32 US dollars, of course, with bundled pricing options. While both of Armilla's options are quality built, the Vestigo is superior in pretty much every way. The Aerial Ballistic takes a lot of steps back in the wrong direction, while the Vestigo is leaps and bounds ahead of it. Again, the Aerial Ballistic is a fine, traditionally styled nylon strap if you prefer something akin to a NATO with the two pieces of fabric. However, I find in most all cases, this extra piece of fabric is extraneous and better left off. I do prefer single pass nylon straps, so this already gets a negative mark in my book for using two pieces of 1.4 millimeter thick pieces of fabric under the watch head. Now, you'll also notice the other issue here being the amount of space provided on that single slip of fabric. There's barely over an inch of additional fabric to allow for a watch head to fit underneath the strap here with this extra piece of fabric. Now you can of course cut this off, but if we're using it as it's been manufactured, you'll notice that my C4 that measures 46.5 millimeters from lug end to lug end barely has any wiggle room on this strap in its current form. Again, if you were gonna buy one of these, I would recommend cutting this extra piece of fabric off so that you have more space to place your watch head on it. And I assure you the watch head isn't going to slip off of a piece of fabric that is this thick. I also take issue with the uniformity of the branding on both of these straps, or rather, the lack thereof. You'll notice that on the right, the Vestigo's buckle features the Armilla Griffin over on the right-hand side, where the polished buckle of the Aerial Ballistic features the name Armilla, where the first keeper here features no branding, nor the second keeper. The first keeper on the Vestigo also features Armilla. You'll notice on the Aerial Ballistic, it's featured down here on that secondary piece of fabric. I would like it if both of these featured the branding in the same location, similar to the Vestigo. I think this is the better look between these two straps. Now, this is a minor complaint, but I do think it looks a little confused. Another issue I found between both of these straps, and it's less of an issue with the Vestigo and more with the Aerial Ballistic, is the spacing of the holes. They're a little too wide for my liking. I found that there was no real way to get this strap to fit my wrist well, or at least to my liking. The watch was either too tight or rolling about my wrist. I'd like it if the perforations were smaller and perhaps grouped a little bit closer together. I found the spacing of the Vestigo's holes less problematic, and perhaps that's indebted to its 1.2 millimeter thickness, but between these two straps, I can easily recommend the Vestigo if you're looking to get a new single pass nylon option. The hardware on both of these straps is phenomenal. Uh, the buckle isn't unique. I feel like I've seen this on a few different straps on the market. However, these keepers I have not seen to date. I loved how curved they are and how tall they are off of the strap. It makes fitting this to your wrist really easy. And speaking of, here's what the Vestigo will look like for all of your admirers on a seven and a quarter inch wrist. And when you are going to admire it, it's going to look a little something like this. This is definitely the strap I wore most often between the two. Again, it just wears that much better. 
There is one other minor complaint I'd like to mention, but I'll go ahead and take this watch off my wrist first. This is where I wear the Vestigo on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It's six holes in from that initial perforation. And you'll notice that the strap as it curls over is really close to the buckle. If your wrist is smaller than mine, bear in mind that this extra piece of fabric is probably gonna outstretch on top of that buckle, which isn't too flattering. I think it would have been a better idea to have the secondary keeper come out a little bit further. And I mean, that's why we made that first keeper flexible, right? That's why we have a floating first keeper. So say if the keeper, the secondary one was out here, you'd be able to cinch it down by having that floating first keeper to keep this strap not only away from the buckle, but away from flying off the wrist. The keepers here can use a little bit of adjustment. That secondary keeper could definitely afford to come down a little bit further on the strap so that the strap itself stays away from the buckle. And in doing so, that initial keeper will have a little bit more wiggle room on the strap to cinch down the tongue of our strap as it's folded over. All in all though, the Vestigo is a near perfect option if you're looking to get an affordable seat belt style nylon strap. However, I cannot recommend the Aereo Ballistic. Its issues with wearability, as well as the fact that I can't get brushed hardware on the strap, are a little bit of a detriment to it. It'd be great if all the color options that are found here were also found on the Vestigo. So perhaps expanding the color range on the Vestigo, as well as making those micro adjustments on the keepers. Also new to market is Barton's Alligator Grain Leather Strap. They measure a combined total of eight inches in length, which is suitable for a 5.5 to eight inch diameter wrist. They measure 18 to 20 to 22 millimeters in total width at the spring bar end and five millimeters thick at that end as well. They'll taper down two millimeters to the buckle end, and the buckle end itself measures three millimeters thick. There are six different color options, five hardware options. They just provide nearly everything you'd expect a typical Barden watch to be provided with, and all around $28 a piece. That two millimeters worth of tapering on whichever model you get really does make a world of difference so far as wearability is concerned. These are just so comfortable on the wrist. And I love the fact that they went with a flat tongue instead of a more traditional pointed one. This just ensures that it's not gonna fray as easily as your typical leather strap. My only real qualm with the alligator grain straps is the buckle, which is made out of 316L stainless steel. It does feel a little cheap, just too thin and perhaps too shiny. However, it does the trick. The quick release spring bars on these straps is something that you'll either love or hate. Now, personally, they've really grown on me. I've gotten used to Barden's system of using quick release springs in pretty much all of their strap offerings. It does make a world of difference on a case that doesn't feature holes in the lugs. It just makes the job of changing your strap that much easier. Barden is just one of those brands that knocks it out of the park every time when it comes to options. The new alligator grain leather strap will come in either smoke gray, black, coffee, toffee, navy blue, and of course the crimson red I have featured here. This is what the new alligator grain strap will look like on a seven and a quarter inch wrist for all of your admirers. And when you are going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. And here is the crimson red alligator grain strap on my Ergon Maelstrom. Again, it has a fantastic fit and feel on the wrist. The only thing I'll mention that is a little troubling is the feel of that secondary keeper down there. Now, personally, I would take that off because I don't really need it, but if you do find you need this additional keeper, the thread work on the back is a little itchy on the wrist and will begin to scratch your wrist through day-to-day -day use. The thread work there could be a little bit better, but everything else um, here, so far as the threading is concerned, is really comfortable on the wrist. Much like the Elite silicone straps I had from Barden last, I can easily recommend these alligator grain straps. If you wanted the look of a premium alligator leather strap, sans the price, this is an excellent option. Last up, we have a new silicone strap offering from the online accessory Kings over at Vario. And very similarly to Barden, these will measure eight inches in total length, roughly eight inches, and taper down to two millimeters at the tail end where the buckle rests. They'll come in at 20 or 22 millimeters in width and have five different accent threaded colors. We of course have red in front of us, but there is gray, dark gray, orange, and blue. The best part is they'll all weigh about 14 US dollars. 
Vario is one of those brands that is always innovating. As a matter of fact, at the time of filming this, I don't believe these are up on their website, but do check back in the middle of February to see if you can't find these silicone watch straps on their site. But beyond the straps, they have new cases coming out. Uh, folks always ask me what cases I use for traveling. They have a new one that I'm definitely gonna be buying soon. It's this gorgeous single loader with this uh, interesting pattern on the outside with a mesh pocket on the inside for holding additional accessories. It just looks amazing. But back to the strap itself. This is very similar to something like a Tropic rubber strap with the multitude of perforations. So you can expect it to breathe extremely well on the wrist and it being made of silicone, you can expect it to be extremely slinky and comfortable as well. I've personally been using the silicone strap with the red accent threading as I think it pairs best with my Maelstrom here, but there are different accent colors. And here's just one option here. This is the dark gray threading. I think this is the most neutral look if you're trying to get something to pair well with most all watches. I think the gray is just a good tone. Obviously red won't pair well with everything, but if you have a red line Submariner, maybe this will look good with that too. My only qualm here is with the hardware options. The only hardware I've seen available thus far is the high polished buckle. And although I will say that the quality of this is a step above Barden's range, I will say it is nice to have those options. But as with most all Vario accessory options, I find that they're both practical and affordable at $14. And of course, the quality to cost ratio is heavily in favor of quality. I just love the fit and feel of these straps and the overall design is really great too. And here's the new Vario silicone watch strap in two-tone fashion. I only had it set up like this to illustrate what these red colors look like, but I'm actually kind of a fan of this look. But here it is on a seven and a quarter inch wrist for all of your admirers. And when you are going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. Like most all silicone straps, you can expect it to be a bit of a dust magnet. However, if you're equipping it to a diver's watch or anything with a good enough water resistance rating, you can simply run it through water to wash off any sort of residue that builds up on the straps. But I have to say, of all the silicone straps I've received in a while, this has to be the most comfortable. It is so slinky, and just the wearability is out of this world. Also, the breathability is fantastic with the multitude of perforations you can find here. It's just a great, well-wearing strap. Of course, you have to like the look of this strap to enjoy it. And personally, on a sports watch, I think it looks great. Again, at $14, the bargain here is really tough to beat. Vario truly is one of the kings of online watch accessories. Now, before I close out the video, I'd like to personally thank Ivan over at Vario, Zach over at Barden, and Andre, of course, of Armilla for sending their wares my way to test out and share my experiences with you all. Now, if you found this video enlightening or in the least entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a whole heck of a lot like this guy. If you have friends, forums, or groups interested in picking up a new silicone strap, alligator grain strap, or nylon strap, if they haven't found the right one for them, feel free to share this video with them so they can check out the February strap roundup for themselves. Also, if you're new to the channel, well, welcome. I do videos like this two or more times a week. So if watch content is your thing, feel free to slam that subscribe button. And while you're down there, you can hit the little bell icon just next to that to be alerted as to when my videos air. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette and thank you for the time.